Well, hello. Hey, this is Greg Rooney with Connect the Dots. Hey, we're going to take a look at something that is really flying around the airways. What is the importance of the second coming of Jesus Christ? So in this video, we're going to unveil the mysteries about his second coming and give a clear understanding on what it looks like, when it's going to happen, and where is it talked about in the Word of God, the Bible, especially as we navigate through these end times, last days. This is important information, so hang on. We're going to dig in, and if you have a Bible, grab that. If you don't, just listen in, and we're going to cover this topic and help you understand better this unveiling of the mystery of the second coming of Christ. First of all, why do we call it a mystery? Well, guess what? It was something that was concealed in the Old Testament to the Jews at the time before Jesus, and now after Jesus has been on the earth the first time in the New Testament, that mystery was unveiled. So we're going to look at that. Now, the second coming is a term used to refer to the future event when Jesus will return to earth, conquering his enemies and reigning as king of the world. Let me repeat that, and reigning as king of the world. Now, Jesus described his return his own words, and those are recorded in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 30. Listen to what Jesus said about himself. Now then, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And also, in the book of Revelation, the apostle John wrote about this, as he was told what to write through an angel of the Lord that appeared to him on the island of Patmos. Here's what he recorded in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 16. Listen to what this says. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself, and he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on a white horse. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now this concept of Jesus' second coming was a mystery to the Jews and to Jesus' followers until he ascended into heaven after his crucifixion and resurrection. And the Jews knew of the suffering servant and the conquering king, but they didn't understand that the work of the servant and the work of the king would occur at two different times. You can check out these verses here on the screen in Isaiah and chapter 7 and 9 and Zechariah 14. Read those verses. that will show you what the word of God says and how the Jews didn't understand that this was going to be two separate events. These verses will help you see that. Check those out for yourself. Now, you remember the story. Most everybody's familiar with this, but remember when Jesus rode in to Jerusalem, people laid down their coats and palm branches for him during his triumphal entry into Jerusalem because why? Because they expected a military leader to save them from this oppressive Roman rule. Now, even after Jesus' death and resurrection, the disciples didn't understand he had to leave and return. And as you read through the Gospels, you'll see this played out. But after Jesus ascended to heaven, the angels explained to the confused disciples, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into the heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from the earth will come in the same way as you saw him go up to heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 11. Now it's interesting, people today still confuse Jesus' second coming with the rapture of the church which occurs prior to Jesus' second coming. Now, the rapture is described in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Let me read those here. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then 
We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we will always be with the Lord. Did you notice a very similar in phrasing and terminology, and even in the original Greek, you can see the similarities between these verses in 1 Thessalonians and Acts chapter 1, verse 11, even the taken up part. Interesting. Now let's explain this event. During the rapture, Jesus will come down to the skies or come down to the clouds to collect his followers, but he will not set foot on the earth. He will remain in the air, as we just read there in 1 Thessalonians. And as we referenced earlier in this video, but by contrast, his second coming to earth in Zechariah 14 verse 4, that's in the Old Testament, it's one of the minor prophets, says that Jesus' feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. When Jesus returns, he will fulfill prophecy, destroy his enemies, gather and bless his people, and reign as king. You can see that spelled out in Zechariah chapter 12 verses 1 through 9. You can see that in Revelation chapter 19, verses 15 and 16, and also Isaiah 11 and Zechariah 12, verse 10, and other places as well. You can check it out. All those verses that we have listed on the screen that list that, way too many to mention here. They'll be down in the description as well. And I encourage you and ask you, read those for yourself, and you'll know what this says. Now, we cannot know when Jesus' second coming will occur, although we can look for signs and events that must occur beforehand. Look at all these verses that talk about that in Matthew 24. You can see it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses later on in Matthew 24 as well. I'll have those listed below and they'll be down in the comment section so you can read these verses. And also in Revelation chapter 6 through 18, describe this period between the rapture and before Jesus comes back to earth to rule and reign and defeat his enemies. Like the other prophecies about the end times, the promise of Jesus' return is to give us encouragement. That's why this is one of my favorite go-to verses, and it might be yours as well. I invite you to check it out, Titus 2.13. And that and many other verses are to exhort us and encourage us to continue to trust and obey him until he takes us home at the rapture. And then he comes back at the end of the tribulation period to the earth to defeat the enemies of the earth, to defeat the Antichrist and his army at a battle called the Battle of Armageddon. We get to come back with him and watch him do that. We're riding on the white horses behind him. As you see in Revelation 19, when he comes down to heaven, we're in God's army. We don't participate, we get to observe. And then he rules and reigns the earth for a thousand years from his throne on Jerusalem, on the revived earth, and we get to rule and reign with him and get to use our gifts, our talents, and the things that he gave us when we were alive in this body to rule and reign in our eternal body during that thousand-year kingdom. What a glorious time that will be. So that's unveiling the mystery of Jesus' second coming, and it's in two parts, at the rapture, to remove his bride of Christ, the church, and his return to earth at the end of the tribulation period to set up his millennial kingdom and defeat the enemies. So make sure you're on the winning team. Invite Jesus in your life to be your savior, repent of your sins, and turn to him, and he will wash you for the penalty and payment of the sin because he took it for us. That's why he died on the cross. And through that, we can inherit the free gift of eternal life and participate in this blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior at the rapture. And he'll take us out of here at the perfect time. And we'll get to be in his presence forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you.